Okay, so a lot of people showed an interest in me talking about and showing how to do these various tweaks with their Quest 2 to try and get a little bit better quality uh, link out of it. Um, you know, for, for sim racing and for, for everything really. And up until, well, this morning really, the things you could do didn't make a big enough dis difference for me to really warrant talking about them, which is why I haven't mentioned them other than mentioning yesterday that I wasn't mentioning them because in my review, I want to do an out of, out of box experience, you know, what you get as it comes. But enough people said, oh yeah, Carl, we find it quite interesting, you know, to hear your thoughts on these tweaks you can do using the Oculus Debug tool and SideQuest and what have you. So, Oculus or Facebook released version 21 of their software yesterday, I think it was. And one of the things that's improved, I'll just read it off the website here, it says we've improved our automatic graphic setting prediction to help ensure that you have the optimal experience with Oculus Link. Now, one of the things they've done is allow you to change the video bit rate, the encoding bit rate for the stream that, that goes over the link cable to your, to your Quest 2. So I got this down, obviously, and um, I fired up a couple of sims and I fired up a few different games to try it out. Now, initially, my first impression was that visually there was a big, a big difference. It was very, very noticeably clearer with less compression than there was before. I, in fact, I almost couldn't see any compression, um, which is really, really good. And I thought, okay, this is, this is nice. And I hadn't, I hadn't been into the Oculus Debug tool. I hadn't changed any of the settings myself at this point. It was just how it comes after this new update. Um, so then I went into the Oculus Debug tool to have a play around with the settings in there. And I'll show you how to bring this up so you can have a play for yourself. Because a few people have asked about it. So let's, let's, let's show you. Let's get some screen capture on the go, first of all. Okay, so yeah, that's started. So you wanna to go to, this is just obviously my, my computer or your, your PC, go to um, your C drive. I think it's in program files rather than program files x86. Let's have a look, have we got, yeah, Oculus folder. And then go to support, I think it is. Yes, and then Oculus Diagnostics. And then you'll see the Oculus Debug tool there. Now, I've created a shortcut to this in my start menu, so it makes it a bit easier. But um, it needs to be run as an administrator, or at least it does for me. So in this case, you would right click it and run as an administrator. Uh, and then you'll get this come up here. Now, where it says here, encode bitrate, megabits per second, I've got it at 200, this is where I've been playing around. By default, I may as well just show you, everything should be zeroed like that. That's what the default settings are. Now. As I say, I did the update, I played some games, I raced in some sims, I noticed a good improvement in the overall quality. Couldn't really see any compression, which is a big, big deal. Now, the resolution is still noticeably lower than the native resolution of the Quest. As soon as you go back to the Quest home, where it's not running over the link, or you load up a native Quest app, it is pin sharp by comparison to going over the link. So it's still running at that lower resolution. But you've got to remember, this is still in beta, and this is one of the reasons I haven't really spoke about this sort of stuff yet, because we're so close to it coming out of beta, and presumably it's then gonna be running the native resolution of the Quest 2, and we're gonna have 90 hertz available. So, you know, I didn't wanna to waste too much time making these little in-between videos that might only be relevant for, you know, possibly even a couple of weeks, but, there is a big step up in quality. And when I reviewed the headset, you know, I said it's, if you can choose a different headset for sim racing, then you should do because the experience compared to a wired PC VR headset really is that much worse. You know, um, this closes the gap a bit. I'm still gonna say at the moment, a wired PC VR headset gives you a better experience. You know, the, the native resolution of a Rift S or a Valve Index gives you a crispier image than what you get over Link with the Quest 2. So that's, that's still my recommendation. But the compression issues that I could noticeably see before 
are pretty much gone. So that's a, that's a real step forward. Um, but yeah, back to, to the Oculus Debug tool here. The important ones obviously are under the heading Oculus Link. Uh, and the only other one you might play with aside from that is the very top one that says pixels per display pixel override. As it says in the pop-up bubble, it's basically super sampling or down sampling. Now when you super sample anything, you're rendering it at a higher resolution, you're shrinking it back down, it sharpens it up. So super sampling gives you a better overall image quality over the link straight away, but at the cost of performance, because you're rendering it at a higher resolution. Uh, and to be honest, to me, super sampling still makes the biggest difference when it comes to using the link. And that's always been the case. You could, you could always super sample the image. So to me, that still makes the biggest difference. The encoding bit rate that you can now play around with, you can, put up to, you can go up to 500 megabits per second. For me, I can't see a difference once you go over about... 150, somewhere between 100 and 150, it becomes very difficult to see an improvement. And you can, you can change this on the fly. So how can I best explain this? If you connect your Quest 2 via link so that you are looking at your Oculus home inside the Quest 2, not the Quest home, the desktop version Oculus home, the one you can move around in, the one that's got the lasers and the, you know, the Bit, uh, the beat sabers, the lightsabers, uh, and the bow and arrow, the one you can customize. You, you, if you're in there, over link, um, and take a look at the, the brick walls on the left-hand side, for example, you can, you can have this screen, this Oculus Debug tool, loaded up by using going to your virtual desktop from Oculus Home there. Um, and you can come in here and you can use your Oculus Touch controllers to change this bit rate using a virtual keyboard that pops up. Um, within the home. So you can actually change this bit rate right on the fly and physically see what difference it makes. So put it down, if you want to play with this, put it down as low as five megabits per second. That's what I did. Obviously it looks absolutely terrible. There is compression artifacting everywhere. You lose all your detail. Uh, but, but this is the whole point. Start really low and gradually step it up a little bit. Go, I went from five, I went up to 25, I went up to 50 to 75 to 100. And from about 100 onwards, I was really struggling to see a difference. You know, by 100, everything was sharp. I couldn't, or as sharp as it is overlink at that lower res, I couldn't really see much of a difference going beyond that. Uh, and I went up as high as, well, I went up as high as 500, but I kept coming back down. I got down to 200, it still looked the same. Got down to 150 and it, it, it still looked the same. You know, as far as I know, my eyes are good, so we shouldn't be um, having any issues with my ability to see, but, I'm, I'm wondering whether as part of this new update, they um, dynamically adjust the bit rate on the fly, perhaps based on performance, maybe a performance profile of your PC, perhaps based on what it is you're playing. I, I, I don't really know. I, I don't know how their algorithm works. I don't know whether this setting here acts as maybe a cap so if you set it at 100, it will never go over 100, but it will drop down if it needs to. You know, so maybe setting it at 500 um, will, will be like an upper limit. Or whether you know having it on the default setting here zero, it will use up to 500 anyway. Should you be in a really frantic scene in the game or flying down a you know a rally stage in dirt rally where there's lots changing, maybe it will automatically use that new available. Um, bit rate that, that, that's there now, which is why when I tried it straight away after the update, I see this, this improvement. And then when I come in here and manually did it, I didn't really see any difference other than obviously lowering it and making it worse. So perhaps they, they automatically make use of it. You know, the, the phrase they, they said is that they've, uh, what did they say? If I close the page? Yeah, I've closed the page. They said something like they automatically optimize your graphics performance or, or settings, didn't they? So. I'm thinking they, they, they use what's available there now by default because it, you know, it's, it's a reasonable step up in quality as far as compression goes. Now, I did play around with encode resolution width, which is the one above, and this is the one that everyone mentioned before, saying you can change the output resolution, blah, blah, blah. Um, to be honest, that didn't make a big enough difference to even worry about. I mean, I, I don't even know if I could tell 
a difference. I was looking for details, you know, crisper details in, in the background uh, and in the foreground, and I didn't really notice a difference. And I, I tried that in conjunction with uh, super sampling as well, with and without it. I tried it with a bit rate, low and high, you know, to isolate this setting on its own to see what difference it made. But it didn't make a noticeable difference to me. I mean, this may be because the overall resolution is still set at that of the Quest 1, which is, I believe, how the link is running at the moment. But I may as well stop the screen capture now because you've, you've seen what you need to see. So that is how you use the Oculus Debug tool. And as I say, try it live in the Oculus Home, the desktop version of Oculus Home, and do it using the virtual, the virtual desktop in there. Not, not SideQuest virtual desktop that you use to transmit wirelessly, but within the Oculus Home, uh, when you bring up your little Oculus control panel in front of you, there is a picture of a monitor, and, you can, and it says virtual desktop, and it brings up your PC's desktop. Do it there, and you can adjust all those settings live and see what difference it makes to the image around you, uh, and really you know, sort of fine tune it and see what effect it has. Now briefly mentioning virtual desktop, the application that lets you, confusing the same two terminologies, the application that lets you stream wirelessly to the Quest 2 and to the Quest 1. This update to Link has really made virtual desktop look noticeably poorer. When I first reviewed the Quest a week ago, the difference between Link and virtual desktop in some games was almost non-existent, basically. And in some, virtual desktop even looked a little better, I would say. But now, with this update, I'm gonna say virtual desktop, particularly again in racing titles, um, where lots are changing, um, you know, like, like a rally stage. And again, I've referenced Star Wars Squadrons before because there's lots of black when you're in space. Black particularly shows up compression artifacting. So again, virtual desktop, you, you just wouldn't play those titles using it. Whereas now with Link, I would actually, given if, you know, assuming I didn't have a wired PC VR headset, I would not be disappointed playing those titles using this over the Oculus Link cable. So it's definitely moved forward. All we need now to make it perfect, in my opinion, is for it to run at the native res of the Quest 2 to really sharpen that image up. Um, because you still get the old jagged edge in the distance that you notice, and that's how you can tell the resolution isn't where it should be. Um, and for it to run at 90 hertz, because 72 hertz, for most people, is all right, but for me, I, I, I do get motion sickness. Um, you know, I'm, I've kind of got used to it these days, but playing at length at 72 hertz, I do feel a little worse for wear when I take the headset off versus what I did if I was playing at 90 hertz. Um, you know, so that's what we've still got to come. And I, I, won't, I won't draw a final conclusion about whether I recommend this as a sim racing headset until that link finally comes out of beta, hopefully in a few weeks, and hopefully with 60 hertz, and hopefully at the native res of the Quest, because I think that will really finish the experience off nicely. This current update has taken us sort of halfway there, I, I would say, so we're really getting there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I think we're at right now. Um, Hopefully some of you found this interesting, maybe helpful. If I've got anything wrong with regards to the way the compression works or, or is done, obviously I'm no expert, so I do apologize. Some of you may know more than what I do. Um, some of you think you do, but you definitely don't. But some of you might actually do. We all know the internet's full of those people. Um, so yeah, by all means, if, if I have got something wrong, feel free to you know, correct me in the comments because I like to learn about this sort of stuff as much as you guys do. Anyway, what's today? Saturday. Yeah, have a nice weekend and I'll catch you all later. Take it easy.